So now that we have a good sense, no pun intended, uh, of what a sensory process really entails, uh, I think it's important to put this into context uh, in specifically one of the most important and one of the most famous senses uh, that you can imagine, and that is the sense of sight, of course. Uh, and sight is going to be mediated by, it's going to be completed by one of uh, the most important organs you can imagine, uh, and that is the human eye, at least in us. Um, so we're going to entitle this first flowchart human eye one. And the basis of this flowchart uh, is basically going to be uh, summarized nicely on figure 50.17 in the textbook. What we're going to be covering uh, is two major things, and that's really important uh, in any study of uh, body systems, body parts, whatever it may be, and that is anatomy and physiology, of course. So the human eye has a very specific anatomy, a couple of key anatomical components that we want to know of, and when we think of anatomy, remember all we're saying is the structure of the human eye. And then in contrast, we also want to look at the coinciding physiology of the human eye. And the physiology of the human eye is going to be, of course, uh, to help us to see. Uh, and in other words, this physiology will, all about, will be all about the functions associated with the human eye. In terms of the anatomy and structure, we'll give a couple of key anatomical components, starting with the cornea. The cornea of the human eye is just transparent. That means you can see right through it, and that's good, right? If it wasn't transparent, we'd have a very difficult time seeing the world around us. It's a transparent outer layer that covers our eye. So it's a transparent outer layer. In addition to the cornea, there's also going to be something that's sort of a, along the lines of the cornea. Uh, it's the sclera. The sclera of the human eye, I just think of this as the whites of our eye. The whites of our eye is just a bunch of uh, connective tissue that helps ensure that the eye stays in place, that it's nice and tucked in within that eye socket. This is really just the whites of the eye. In addition, we also want to look at a really important component of the eye. They're all important, but this one especially, uh, the iris. The iris is actually very famous because it is the colored portion of the eye. This is the exact structure that looks blue, or that looks brown, that looks hazel, green, whatever it may be. Uh, that's the colored portion of the eye. But besides giving us that color, uh, the iris is also going to be super, super important in letting light in. The amount of light and how much light that gets into the eye, which is going to be important in the physiology in just a second, is very much regulated. It is controlled by the iris. So we'll say that the iris is going to be the one that regulates the anatomical structure, that regulates light entering the eye. But actually, specifically, there's a portion of the eye that I'll cover right now uh, that is the pupil. The pupil is actually directly going to be the place where light enters, but the amount of light that enters and how much light that enters, whatever it may be, that goes to the pupil is regulated by the iris, specifically because the iris has this really unique capability of changing its size. It can get bigger, it can get smaller, it can let less light in or more light in, depending on the scenario. And that's why we say pupils either dilate or constrict. They either get bigger or smaller because the iris controls how much light is entering that pupil. Speaking of the pupil, the pupil is also an anatomical structure to cover. Uh, this is just uh, actually, it's the dark part of your eye. It's that little hole. Uh, it's actually nothing more than a hole or a cavity. And that makes sense, right? You want light to enter this structure. You want to go deep within this structure, which we'll see. Uh, this is just the hole and cavity that's at the center. And I think a really fun thing to do is if you're uh, looking at a mirror, let's say it's in the bathroom, and you close your eyes for a decent amount of time, let's say like five to 10 seconds, and then immediately open your eyes and look closely at your pupil, look closely at your iris, you're literally going to see your pupil constrict. It's gonna start off big and it's gonna start getting smaller and smaller and smaller because light is being regulated. How much is entering, how little is entering, based off of that moment of closing and opening, closing and opening. So it's a fun little experiment to prove to you that this is capable of changing its size because it's regulated by this iris, which is capable of changing its size. In addition, uh, the anatomy contains the retina. This is a really important structure because it's going to be very much related to the function, the physiology. The retina is going to be the innermost layer of the eye. 
So really, over here, we're talking about outer layers. This is very much an interior layer. We can't see this. Uh, it's an innermost layer of the eye, deeply embedded within the structure. So innermost layer. This is going to be an important site because this is where we actually get some really important sensory components. Uh, those are things like neurons and photoreceptors. These are going to be critical, critical structures that help us do the job, the physiology, the function of the eye. That is to see our external outside world, which we'll get into. And then finally, the last anatomical structure is the lens. The lens is like this really sort of intermediary component. It simply is going to separate the outside from the inside. I just think of it uh, as something that divides the eye divides the eye into two cavities, aka the outermost cavity and the innermost cavity, the outer layer and the inner layer. Uh, and that's the basics uh, of the anatomy, at least in regards to the lens. So it divides eye into two cavities, nothing more, nothing less. Okay, so these are some important anatomical components. Make sure you look at figure 50.17 to really visualize these. Again, no pun intended with that. Finally, we're going to cover the physiology, and this is going to be a broad overview of the physiology. In the next video on the human eye, we'll go into the details. But when we talk about the eye, we all know that it's supposed to see, right? That's how we see. Eyes help you see. What does seeing really mean, though? What is that in terms of the physiology associated with the anatomy within the human eye? The eye is going to be important physiologically because it has this super, super critical role of detecting. This is a key word here. It detects light. Okay? Did I say that it sees anything? Did I say that it perceives anything? No, the eye doesn't see or perceive technically. Technically, all the eye does is detect light, and this is going to be at very specific wavelengths. Now, wavelengths, where is that from? That's all the way from bio 1. Wavelengths are basically going to be a part of the electromagnetic spectrum, EMS. Way back when in bio 1, we talked about the EMS briefly, that there's this broad, broad range of visibility. The EMS contains things like gamma rays, x-rays, UV rays, infrared rays, radio waves, TV waves, whatever it may be. What do we see as part of the EMS? we see what's known as the visible light portion. And of course, we see that because it's visible to us. This is a very small sliver of the EMS. If you look at the electromagnetic spectrum, it contains all of those things I mentioned, gamma rays, x-rays, whatever it may be. But what our eyes do physiologically is that they can detect the visible light portion, the visible light wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum. Again, key word here is that the eye physically, physiologically detects light. What about seeing? What about actually perceiving our outside world? That's going to be actually the job of the brain. And to sum it up, we essentially can say that the information, let's say the eye info, the light that's detected, whatever is being technically seen on the outside environment, that information will be passed to the central nervous system, the CNS, via something known as the optic nerve. Now, this is going to be highlighted in detail in the next video, but just understand that we're taking the information that we've detected, that we've sensed from the outside world, that sensation of light entering the eye and passing it on to something that's able to actually interpret that message. This is why we say that the eye detects light, detects an, it detects an image, but what actually sees the image? That's our good old brain. The brain, in quotes, sees the image. The brain, in other words, I like to think of it as interprets the image, understands that what you're looking at, if you look outside, is a tree. That tree is understood as a tree because the brain has gotten enough information passed on to it by the detection of light done by the human eye all from the beginning in order to interpret that image. That's a key distinction between what the brain does and what the eye does. Interpreting, I would even say recognizing, whatever you want to call it, the brain interprets. The brain recognizes whatever image that is going to be perceived by our central nervous system. So that's a broad overview of the anatomy and the physiology. In the next video, last video on the human eye, we'll go into the details of how all of this goes about in terms of a sensory process.